In this video, I'll show you how to go from this to this. About two days after buying this car, the passenger wing mirror packed in, or should I say the right side wing mirror. Took it to my mechanic, he said he couldn't do anything. I think it was because this these, these are fancy mirrors. They've got like um, an auto dimming feature. Either way, he didn't fix it. So I took it upon myself to do so, but I really had nowhere to start. Found a video, very interesting one, from a guy called Slow Citro Man. Showed you how to take the mirror apart up to a certain point. But he didn't show actually like the internals, which I'm going to show here, by the way. So thanks, Slow Citro Man. I hope you don't mind, but I'm going to show how to take the mirror apart completely. But anyway, uh, back to what we were talking about. I took it upon myself to fix it. Because I thought if it's just the motor, and the motor is this tiny little thing, if it's just that, why am I going to spend money like buying the entire unit or something like that, as most people probably would? And in the course of my research, I, I really reached the conclusion that most, if not all, motorized, you know, folding wing mirrors, at least the modern ones, they all seem to be more or less identical. I mean, you know, the components may change, but that motor... I've got a sneaking suspicion that motor is the same for every single car in the world. I might be wrong, but I do honestly think that I, this solution is applicable to all old PSA models. I don't know about the modern ones, you know, the Stellantis stuff, but I'd wager the answer is yes. But even other cars, even your Audis and Volkswagens and BMWs and whatnot, they probably use the same principle. So this video will probably be very useful for anyone wanting to do this. Uh, and also, you can see how someone as ham-fisted as me was able to do it. It's not that hard of a job. So if, by the way, if you do like to see someone with very little skill and experience trying to fix his own car, please subscribe. I'm sure there'll be something for you in the future. So here's how it went. So for this, you're going to need some Torx keys. Okay, got to have these. And some of these like removal tools, these are easy to find on eBay or AliExpress and they're very cheap. In fact, you can get like a removal tool kit for about three euros or something. And it even includes radio removal uh, tools. Hello. Anything else you'd like to add? Still looking for food. <laughs> At this point, the audio became unusable, mostly due to wind noise. Anyway, use the removal tool to pop out the glass part of the mirror. You just pry it in at the back and then gently but firmly pull forwards and pop out it comes. Undo the wiring. This, this wire I'm undoing is for the electrochrome auto dimming part and that just pops out. And then here, there are two wires. I put paper around one of them, as you see here, to tell them apart so I know which one goes where because they're both black, which is a bit odd, but then I don't know. Maybe it doesn't make a difference which one goes in where, because it just completes a circuit, creates resistance, which creates heat. Anyway, they're hard to actually pull out, so I actually had to use the removal tool to pop them out. And, and out they came, it was more or less straightforward. And so the glass was free, here it is. That's my camera reflected in the mirror. And then this next bit is just pushing down on tabs and popping things out. Again, firmly but gently, and this didn't actually go well for me as you'll see in just a moment. I used a flathead screwdriver because honestly, I don't think it makes any difference if you scratch anything, if it's on the inside. So the next part to come out was that uh, rear housing that's the same color as the rest of the car. And I actually had to use a removal tool to stop it clicking back into place. But it doesn't matter, it fell out, but uh, as long as you manage to get your fingers in and yank it out there, with all the tabs undone, of course, this is the inner housing, next bit to come off. Again, same principle applies, just press down on tabs and just pull the thing apart gently but firmly. This is where it went a bit wrong because I managed to actually get it out. But as you'll see, I managed to break a tab off and I was very annoyed, it made me very sweary and upset, but I tried to glue it back later on. At least I wasn't too upset so as not to forget to film the back and the wiring and see how the wiring goes across because this comes in handy when you want to put everything back together. However, I was upset enough to not film this next part coming off, but it's easy. It's just undoing tabs 
and pulling things apart. It really is not difficult. This is the connector you have to undo before pulling everything apart. And that's the hole where you're going to feed the wires through. Now, underneath this sort of rubber boot here that I'm trying to, with some difficulty, uh, pick open, under this boot, you've got a Torx screw you're going to have to undo. And it's one of two. So this is one. It's a bit finicky to get to, but it's doable. And then on the other side, you have the other Torx screw. Now, I didn't film this, but this is pretty much straightforward. I don't think you need instructions. Anyway, so once it's out, here is what it looks like. You're going to hold on to it and make sure it doesn't scratch your paint. But then you feed the wiring through. And don't feed it all at one time. Feed one wire and then try to feed a couple of others and so on until the entire loom eventually all comes out. And this is the unit that interests us. This is what houses the electric motor. Now to take it home, I put it all in a plastic bag and I try to condition it with this padding to make sure it didn't scratch and such. And I did up the stump of the mirror and the wiring. I put it in a plastic bag with a cable tie and then hoped to God that by the end of the day, I'd have the mirror back in place. And by golly, it was. So first things first, dealing with the casualties of the removal process. And I've got my fantastic rigid plastic glue. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to slather it on. Yeah, I don't think this is going to work because, um, yeah, usually it doesn't. So the next step is to remove the actual motor from this casing. I've already done a dry run. What does that mean? That means I've already taken it apart once and actually got to the very point where I saw the motor, the little electric motor, took it out, went downstairs, confirmed that that was the problem. It just like, it just jerked to one side a bit. So that's the problem. I'm going to show you how to take it out this time. I didn't actually, the reason I did a dry run, not because I was afraid of screwing up and doing it on camera, although the thought did cross my mind, but because it's a lot easier to do this without having to worry about camera angles and chatting and that sort of thing. Before that, let me show you what you're going to need. In my case, I bought this. It's a threaded rod. I had to cut one of the ends off. It was about a meter long. And then I got these washers and these bolts. This is an M10 rod. It doesn't have to be. All it has to do is fit down this hole here. So it can be any size. So the thing is about these washers is they fit more or less well here. What I didn't realize was it doesn't actually fit here sort of. Well, it does. I'll show you in a minute. This is not a problem. It doesn't just doesn't fit concentrically. OK, this is a 12 millimeter washer, which means the orifice is 12 millimeters. And so is each of these sides, all of this 12 millimeters. So that will be 36 millimeters in total across in diameter. And these bolts, sorry, nuts, nuts, M10 nuts. They need a 17 millimeter socket in my case but yeah that doesn't matter it's up to you what you use i use this one you can use any other you like you're also going to need some torque screws you're going to need a couple of them because of these screws down here can you see that they're of different sizes but we'll get to that when we get to that first thing is putting the threaded rod here. Oh yeah, just before I start, the idea is you've got to compress this, this, and this here, this compresses. <sighs> Can't even do it with my hands, it's just so hard. And um, that's going to release a spring. Now, take note of where these grooves are. They're going to have to swivel about 45 degrees to one side or another for this to come out. So it's a good thing to make a note of where they are. First time I took it apart, actually it swiveled by itself and then it all came out by itself. Just put it in like so to one side. It works, by the way. It does work. You won't break anything if you do it properly. There you go. So yeah, just going to have to do this up. Now you can see on the paper 
that is proof of my previous run it's very greasy in there so do have some grease on hand for when it's all done so you can put it all back together now I don't know how far this this has to go but if you do feel too much resistance stop this is all plastic so you go too far you'll break it hopefully this won't happen here hopefully that has definitely shifted that is not where it was so if I undo this this will probably all come undone we'll see no it hasn't I don't think so so that was a dud let's try again keep things in shot a bit so if I put it up you're going to see my CD collection and I don't know if that's recommendable what if there's something here that everyone hates what could it be Nick Drake Bob Marley no one's even heard of Nick Drake so ugh. so this won't go further and it does look like it's moved honestly I'm going to undo it. No, it's going to be in place. I don't feel any kind of res... It's not springing out. Oh! There you go. I was just twisted at using the pliers. So I was pretty sure it had actually changed its orientation it looks like I was right so don't lose this by the way first time I did this this spring popped out and there can you see that there's a bearing there so don't lose that very greasy here so keep a rag or something around anyway next bit let's get rid of this this is a bitch to put back in, be warned. First thing I'm going to do is remove this little thing here. Sort of torque screw. Remove that, get it out, don't lose it. Now, I'm going to get a flathead screwdriver. Try to get the motor, this is the actual motor itself. Go out it comes. There you go. So this is the casing of the motor. Now let me hold it up to the camera so you can see the numbers on it. 2128.37.688. It's also got all of these numbers on it. PBT hyphen GF hyphen 30 TPE. TPE could that be the material it's made of? Also, interestingly here, you might not be able to see it, but it says April 2014. It's got a 14 here. It could be 1914. No, I kind of doubt it. So this is a replacement motor. Hmm. Interesting. Anyway, next, we're going to get this screw off first. This bit also I've already done. Let's not lose that. Then it's just undoing these clips here. Now I undo them by hand myself, but if you don't have nails, as I have verified, many people do not have because they bite them all off. Uh, you're going to need something like a flathead screwdriver for this. You've got to take them all off, by the way. You just can't take three or four and they'll all come off. No, all five have to be picked off. There we are. That's that off. You can see there the insides. Also, if you for good measure, you might want to take off the top if you want to. Again, something that can be done by hand without breaking. That's the top of your motor. So this is going to have to come out. I don't know how. It's all full of grease. Greasy looks good, but I've already verified that this motor isn't working properly. I actually went online and bought a replacement motor, but I do not know if this it all will be good. I did buy it for right hand and also it seems to be 
the correct kind, 10, 10 20, 7, 9, something rather. Yeah, that, according to my research, this was the right type of motor. So we'll have to see about that. So the next bit is to get this is to get to the motor. It's got a circuit board here. I've noticed that, and I did notice that on my research. But can I transfer it onto the new motor? If I can't, I am stuffed. Now the the new motor does have like an entry for these things. So here's hoping. Do I push it out? Yes, I do. That also came out. How about that? Just came out. It's 10 2792. That's the same thing, but let me just see if what else is. Oh dear, this is 3P3956, this is 9S37155, I don't know, it's not exactly the same, but either way, obviously, I'm going to try it out, I mean, what is there to lose? The worst that can happen is it not working, well actually the worst that can happen is it's completely screwing up the car, hmm. Let's just hope that doesn't happen. I'm going to have to go and get some grease. Hold on. Yeah. That was an instant for if you're watching. Hopefully this grease is the correct grease. Oh, this is complicated all gears and stuff there must be a good way of putting it in and I just don't know which way it is it has this little bearing thing on the ends put that in put that in like so in you go baby that's it come on come on don't give me grief please Missing. Is this an O-ring or an or a washer? Oops, it's got a bit of filth on it. I don't want that. Maybe just put some grease on because we know why not. While we're here, Jesus Christ, I'm all filthy already. That will go in. There you go. And then that will go in like so. That seems to be all nice and well put in place. Honestly, it does. Lots of grease. So, there's only one thing to do right now, and that is to test it. By the way, I'm, I am going to put the um, casing on, so all I have to do is just make sure this turns around. If it does, we're cool, but I don't want it to go tits up and for everything to fall apart while I'm in the basement. That would be pretty dire. God, it's all greasy though. Yuck. Connect this up. Come on. Okay. Now, if this works, it'll be brilliant. Son of a bitch. Wow. That is incredibly slow, but it works. 
I'm going to put the mirror back together. I mean, we're not out of the woods, even if it does work. Problem is, will it make that mirror go round? That's the really big question. Now, this is why I could never be a YouTuber, because I just don't have the f***ing patience to set up camera angle and all that rubbish. What we're going to do first is put this back in. Very straightforward. Slot it in. Snap. And there's a screw. Where's the screw gone? And Bob is your auntie. Now, this is the hard part, because this here, real bitch is trying to put this in place. These line up, like so. It's got these grooves. Go in. Whoopsie, see? It turns around, it locks into place, like it is now. Just a bit. Just turn around, I don't know, 45 degrees at most. So it's got these grooves inside, which I don't know if they're visible here. But yeah, if you take these apart, you'll, you'll be able to see how this all fits in. So, put this in, see if this locks in. So, there you go, locked in, lock that into place. Try to keep some pressure on it. Put this in. So, let me see. That's lined up like so. So that means it'll have to go about 45 degrees over there, and then I know it'll be in place and I can undo it. There. And it moved. Okay. That looks about 45 degrees to me. So... I'm going to undo it. Jesus, that was quick. So, I don't think this is in place yet. So what I'm going to do is what I did last time, if you remember. I use the pliers down this bit, it's the only place where the pliers fit, and now this is in place. So, what is the next step you may ask? Next step is going back to the car and seeing if it works. It's been hooked up, I forgot my tripod so that's why it looks so terrible. So, I'm trying to hold it here. My god it works. It works. Now, putting the mirror back together is dead easy. It's just the inverse of the very first part of this video. If you're still unsure, I did a video on this. So click on the pop-out banner in the top right-hand corner. And this is what happened afterwards. Oh God, yes. Another test. Up. Yes, the internal motors are moving. My God, it worked. I'm extremely happy with how this came out. And if you're wondering, I did say at the beginning it was very cheap. And you probably want to know exactly how much that was. Even though we're in the midst of a cost of living crisis and prices are all over the place at the time, I can tell you that the motor cost 11 euros and 38 cents and it was 5 euros and 10 shipping came from aliexpress and in fact i'm going to put up on the screen some details so if you want to look for a similar motor you can but what was really expensive in in my view was that improvised compressing tool that was 5 euros and 10 cents which i thought was a bit too much you know just the threaded rod was two euro 69 those washers two euros and nine cents and at least at least the nuts were cheap they were 32 cents but either way five euros in for all that and it's just a, a one use thing but it doesn't matter it's either way the whole thing was 21 odd euros that's very cheap and very worthwhile 
so that's it for this video thank you very much for watching uh shortly i hope to show you how i also try to mend the rear defroster try to mend i'm not sure if it's worked because i haven't had the chance to, to test it it hasn't rained and i haven't been bothered to like bring a tub of water and heat it and you know um, um fog the car's windows up enough of this and uh thank you very much for watching and subscribe and all that stuff and like and if you like the video and, and i bid you farewell